presentation then I want to move to is from this book called Super Forecasting. This is by Philip Hedlock and Dan Gardner. And this is a book written by two people who are experts in forecasting, but also in risk taking. And uh, the first quote you see, it says, so what is it that elevates forecasting to super forecasting? What matters most is how the forecaster thinks. And down below, only the determined can deliver it reasonably consistently, which is why our analyses have consistently found commitment to self-improvement to be the strongest predictor of performance. So, and what do super forecasters do? It's not who they are, but what they do. It's not a mysterious gift bestowed at birth. It's the product of particular ways of thinking, of gathering information, of updating beliefs. What they did was, is they used, uh, in essence, what we call, um, you know, the wisdom of the crowd. That um, no one person has access to all the information you need to do good forecasting. But what happened was, they said, we now know, second bullet point, a few hundred ordinary people and some simple math to not only compete with professionals supported by a multi-billion dollar apparatus, but also beat them. What if the tournament discovered ordinary people who could, without the assistance of any algorithmic magic, beat the intelligence community? Imagine how threatening that would be. Because that is an ego deflator, I guarantee you. The fact that you know, you're not an expert and you can do it better than those people who claim that they are. So on your outline, I put a list of the steps that they went through to make forecasts. And notice that basically what happens is you, you weed out those people who are not as good as others. And you give those that are extra priority and extra weight in reaching the conclusions that you do. And if you look at the next bullet point, think how shocking it would be to the intelligence professionals who have spent their lives forecasting geopolitical events to be beaten by a few hundred ordinary people and some simple algorithms. And one of the things that the book talks about, and also if you read the blog post this week that uh, was put up by Bob Morris, who uh, reviews books for a living, and, and we did put his uh, review up this week. Uh, there is concern about, you know, can computers do this better than people? And all of you are aware of all the history of things, how computers beat chess masters at chess, and, and how uh, because a computer, you know, has uh, an analytical ability that some humans don't have, you know, how, how faster that is and, and how much higher quality it's supposed to be. But uh, this book makes the argument that that's really not the case, that subjective judgments still really do play a role in forecasting. I, I want to read a quote from the book for you. This is not on your outline. But there is a vast difference between which two Russian leaders traded jobs and will two Russian leaders trade jobs again. The former is a historical fact. The computer can look it up. The latter requires the computer to make an informed guess about the intentions of certain players and the causal dynamics of Russian politics and then integrate that information into a judgment call. And that's something computers can't do. And so I thought it was interesting is, and this is a telltale sign I'll end with this. Notice the header and said there's 10 commandments, but there's actually 11. I, I think that's a very telltale sign about of how, in fact, you have to be flexible and open-minded about forecasting as well. Whoever wins this book, uh, uh, I hope that's what you become. Um, remember the little people when you do that. I hope you enjoyed this synopsis of super forecasting.